Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Today's episode is we're going to be covering the cross-wheel drive service on my Saab Turbo X. Just the other day, I talked to Matt over at eSaab Parts, let him know I'm looking forward to doing this video. He thought it was a great idea to get the info out there for everybody that's wondering. So he hooked me up with a good deal on a cross-wheel drive service kit, and that includes three different oils, one for the transfer case, one for the differential, and the lastly, but most importantly, one for the differential clutch and electronic limited slip differential. Not only do it, does it include the fluids, but you also have a filter in with it. And to start off, I'm going to have to get the system all warmed up because I want to drain all the fluid out of there. So let's go take this baby for a drive. Last time I've done the cross-wheel drive service on this vehicle was about 23 to 25,000 miles ago. Uh, I'm at 102,725 miles. I got the vehicle with 74,000 miles. I didn't change the fluids immediately, but after I took this to an ice rally event, I discovered that the rear wheels would not engage when it was extremely cold out. Um, even though I had driven quite a while up there, the system cooled off just waiting for the runs, and it would not engage the rear tires all the time so I decided that was probably a good sign that I should change the fluids and after doing so it actually has not been a problem ever since and I've been driving this vehicle at autocrosses I've been probably to over a thousand autocrosses with this car alone and the cross-wheel drive system has been performing wonderfully the entire time so to all you, you out there that think the system is made of glass it definitely is not because I've put it through its paces on many occasions and it has seen some abuse so and it seems to like it too I think maybe the harder you drive it the better it is because uh, it's it suited me very well and now after about 23, 25,000 miles of lots of autocross and just normal day-to-day -day, day driving, I mean, I don't drive it all that much. I probably put, uh, well, 1,440 miles on it in the last year. So I just want to see what the fluid looks like after that much hard running and see just what kind of service interval I should be looking at. So hopefully this will give some insight as to how often we should all be changing our fluids. Next time, I've kind of retired the vehicle from autocross, so next time I'll uh, go a little longer on the change interval based upon what the results of the oil are on this one. Because I'm actually gonna send them out and have them checked so I guess uh, I'm just gonna finish off my drive here and get back home get her jacked up and drop those fluids Back from a drive, should be all warmed up. We're gonna get this lifted up as high as I can get it, get under there, and drop those oils.
solid. Okay, as far as where I put the jack stands, I put them right there. Right on that suspension mount point. So, usually pretty good strong spots on vehicles. And one reason I did that is because I'm missing my jack points in the rear, the blocks. So one thing I'll have to replace. All right, let's, uh, I probably don't need these tire ramps. I was actually gonna use those alone, but I didn't like how it dropped down a little. So now I just got both for a little more safety, I guess. So, all right, let's get this started. Right here I have the cross fuel drive service kit you get when you order from Aesop Parts. And that includes the gasket and filter for the Haldex section of the rear diff. And then, as in order, these go the rear section of the differential, the clutch portion, or the Haldex portion of the differential, which is where all the magic happens. And then also, last but not least, the transfer case fluid. So I'll list uh, the part numbers down below so you can have a quick reference on where they go. He also has it uh, listed on the Aesop Parts website when you go to the kit. One of the special tools that I had to go out and purchase to do this service to make things a little easier was this suction gun. And what it does, you just pull this out and it sucks up the oil into here and then when you're ready you just push it back out. And that'll make things a lot easier when I'm under the car and ready to refill. So just one thing to think about, there's other ways you can do it too. Um, I was going to use a syringe type thing, but I felt like this would be a better option. Here is the spread of tools I will be using. I got an 8 millimeter Allen key, and then this one is just to check the fluid levels. You could also uh, use one of these instead of the four millimeter over here, the socket. Um, and then I got an eight millimeter for the fill and fill slash check. And then also the drain plugs on the uh, clutch area and tr transfer case. And the four millimeter with this just for tight spaces. That one is for the clutch reservoir cover. Uh, then you need a ratchet and some extensions. A swivel will help a lot. And then you need some extensions for the um, differential bolts that hold the differential to the um, frame, or the subframe anyways. And if you have an impact gun, that'll help a lot. Otherwise, you can use a ratchet on that also. And a pry bar might come in handy. Then you need... 18 millimeter to get the bolts for the differential. I had one 16 millimeter, you probably won't. And then a suction pump or a suction gun is what it's called at the store. And also brake parts cleaner. I use that to clean this out between every fluid and before the first fluid because you do not want any con contamination in the system. And then I just use this to as a leverage on these for the really tight bolts. Right, part of the procedure that I'm going by is the uh, WIS, which I have right here, workshop information system, 9440, go to 2008. Actually, let's go to transmission, all wheel drive. Yeah, it's just got it all in here. I'm going to do the filter replacement. So if you need any info to look up, just that's how where I'm getting mine. And I mean, it's, you have to jump all over the place in there to get all the different procedures, such as removing the differential or the um, Haldex cover and such. So... All right, if you need that, uh, it runs on Windows XP. So I think there's other ways to get it going too. But I just have this netbook with a Windows XP and that's what I use. 
to look up my WS information and do all my tuning. I'm going to start out with the differential fluid first because that's probably the easiest one to hit. And I'm going to use a 3 ace ratchet. That's all you need to get the plugs out. Nice and warm. I actually should have moved this one also. Oh, that is making a mess. As you saw, it'd probably be a good idea to remove the fill plug first, let out any, and then you don't get that glubbing, I'll call it. But, I mean, it wasn't a big deal. Almost made a mess, but I'm good. It's nice and warm right now, so. Should be draining fairly well. This stuff, That dirty already. I don't want that. All right, that's what the fluid looks like. Not too bad. I mean, definitely can't see through it, so. And that shouldn't be the one we really need to worry about anyways, that's just the differential in there as far as I know. Um, the clutch, uh, the, li limited, the electronic limited slip differential clutch is in here, which is separated from the regular differential. Then we got the um, clutch for the front to rear up a little further. Gonna let that drip for a while, and while that's doing that, I will take out some of the bolts to the differential. Now these bolts are 18 millimeter, and uh, this one was actually missing on my car, so I replaced it. So it's actually a 16 on mine, but hopefully you have all yours, and they should all be 18 millimeter. Then as you can see, the other two are back here. This one there, and this one over here. Those are both also 18 millimeter. All right, I still got one bolt in there, but before I release that one, I'm gonna get the jack and put it under the differential so it doesn't drop down on me. Alright, one thing I noticed is there is a little bit of buildup on there and I did clean these off the last time I did a did a change so there is definitely some wear going on. So maybe it is a good thing that I'm changing it. Oops. This one I got all over my arm. Most of it was on the drain plug. Alright, let's get these plugs back in before I go any further. Actually, I'll probably be filling it.
you want to check the condition of your washer here. These are still in really good condition, so I'm not going to bother with changing them. Okay, we'll get my rear portion of the differential fluid here. Wipe off any drips that we still got going on. Kind of hard to pull. Do it kind of slow and wait a second. Is that good? Nope, not yet. Just so you don't way overfill it. I think I still got a little bit to go. Oh, there we are. Oh. All right. I'll tighten that up. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna get this last bolt out and got my jack in the in position so it doesn't drop the differential all the way down. I mean, it wouldn't go far anyways, but just in case. All right. Now, what that does is drops this down enough to where we can access all of the bolts for the cover. 
and you really don't need to remove the exhaust so I'm just gonna leave it on there I did last time so I'm going to this time as well all right we got a four millimeter hex so don't need that yet As you can see, I'm missing one. I broke that last time. That original one that was missing down here was I actually used it for the middle because I broke that last time. I was thought the cover was stuck on because of the gasket. So I pried it off and broke the middle bolt. So do not forget the middle bolt. It's right in the middle of the cover. Just remember you have 10 all together.
All right, let's get this cleaned out in here now. Now, I'm only gonna spray it in the compartments that do not go to other areas of the unit because I don't want to spray it in there and get it stuck somewhere where I'm not going to be able to get it out and contaminate any fluid that's still in there. Make sure you got good ventilation when you're doing this. I'm just gonna wipe out where the filter goes, which doesn't have much sludge in it. Okay, well, let's see what it looks like in there. Yeah, it looks like we got it pretty clean. A bit of fluid pooling up right there. good. Just get this little gunk out of here. So I'm gonna wipe that down, put the cover on, and we'll fill her up. Yeah, we gotta put the filter in first. It snaps in there, then you put the cover on. Shall we begin? Okay, let's get the filter in there. Gonna lube up the o ring a little. Actually, let's give this one last wipe before we continue. Okay. There, that went in nice. Give those a little pinch and help them hold. There we go. This is not a drill. Get the clean cover. Repeat, this is not a drill. Now, when you fill this. say to fill from the breather valve or the <laughs> breather hole anyways so I'm just gonna put the little thing on there I filled it up just from this before and uh, had no problems but I'll do it according to the uh, WIS And the filter kind of holds it there.
official. I'm just kind of snugging these down. Going by feel. That's what I did last time and I had some good had good luck with it. But uh, there is a specific torque for these that I'll put on the screen. All right, I'm gonna line these ones up first. I think that'll help. All right, now this is difficult because this hose is not very flexible. Start filling. There it is. Still on my liquid gold.
All right, just tighten down the plug. And we're gonna, well, I'm not gonna tighten it, I'm just gonna finger tighten it. Because we're going to turn the key on, let the pump prime, and then check the level again. All right, I'm gonna let it start the car and let it idle for 60 seconds. Check it one more time just to be sure. But it looks perfect. Oh yeah, just right. So now I can put the vent tube back on. Plug in. Make sure it's clean.
snug it up. Oh yeah, that's right. Need the swivel. That or just a regular wrench. All right, there we go. All right, there's everything all buttoned back up. There's the vent tube way up there. All on, plug tightened up. Everything wiped off. So she looks good. All right, there we go. All done back here. So we got an eight millimeter plug on the drain up front. Of course, it's plenty tight. Oh! Woo. There we go. Perfect. Oh man. Now with the factory downpipe, this is not as easy to get to. Not that this is that easy. Alright, fill plug out. Now let's get the drain plug out. Oh god. Huh. Oops. Came out with a lot more force than expected. Now this I actually have never changed, so maybe quite dirty. Now it looks like there's quite a bit of shavings on there. Oh yeah. Give that a quick wipe here. Oh yeah, there's plenty of shavings on there. So the magnet's doing its job. Alright, all clean. And that one doesn't have any magnet on it, so. I'll just let that drain for a little bit and then plug her up and fill her up. Put the drain plug back in.
All right, well, let's fill her up. It's hard to push. Okay, that's definitely full now. Plug in. There we go. There's the transfer case done. So there you have it. That is the complete cross wheel drive service as performed on my 2008 Saab Turbo X. And hopefully it kind of helped you understand what goes into the service uh, of the system. And if you're thinking about doing it yourself, uh, hopefully that gave you the information you need to do it. And maybe or just help you figure out or understand what the shop's going to be doing that's working on your vehicle. Uh, one thing I noticed after the service is the rear wheels were not engaging all the time as they should. So it's a good, good idea to run it in gear for a little bit, whether that's a test drive or just leaving it in the air uh, and running it in gear that way if possible. Uh, because it just gets the uh, fluid circulated in the system uh, a little better than idling it does and uh, that way you can top it off if need be and not have issues with the crosswheel drive not engaging or a service crosswheel drive message popping up which uh, I'm sure would not be too thrilling if you just get a service and then you think Oh crap, my system just went to crap. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just let's let's keep these cars on the road and take care of them because there's not gonna be any more made. And if we service them properly and take care of them, they're gonna take care of us. I know mine's been taking really good care of me, but I've also taken a really good care of it. Especially since I like to drive it hard. Um, but it seems to enjoy it. So I'm going to keep doing that and keep taking care of it and hopefully we'll both have many, many miles to go in the future. So uh, 
thank you all for watching. Thanks again, Aesop Parts, for helping make this video possible. And uh, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe if you want to check out my future videos that I will be doing. So I will catch you all later.